Alright, so you guys asked and you received it. This is going to be a setup video on how to do grassland species of tortoises. What I'm about to describe to you is going to work for babies of pretty much every grassland or uh, arid species of tortoise out there. Things like this baby leopard tortoise, Herman's tortoises, Russian tortoises, Greek tortoises, uh, African spur thighs, the little babies. Uh, all of them are going to be kept pretty much the same way as babies. Uh, so the first thing is going to be bedding. There's a few different options. Uh, here in Southern California, it's super dry, and believe it or not, even for these uh, desert kind of species, you're actually going to need bedding that holds quite a bit of humidity. Uh, I actually really like using cypress mulch, primarily, and uh, often what I'll do is mix it with some of this eco-earth, which is a, a compressed coconut bedding. This absorbs a ton of water and can get super soggy, and if you use it alone for a little baby like this, they usually get clogged up with just all the coconut fiber. Uh, so I usually mix it about half and half, and a lot of the times, directly under the, the warm side, I'll put more of the eco-earth, uh, just so that, that way it holds a bit more moisture. So there's the cypress. You can also do this kind of bark bedding, which is a, a this is our triple L brand of uh, orchid bark. Um, there's a few different kinds out there, pretty much if it's a big, thick bark bedding, it'll work well, and again, you can always mix it with the eco-earth. So this size cage here is one of my preferred sizes. This is a two foot by two foot by 12 inch tall enclosure. Uh, unfortunately, we can't ship these, but if you're local, you can come in and get it here in any of our stores. Um, <laughs> for those of you who aren't local, you'll have to find something similar. We do carry the Zoom Med uh, Tortoise House, which is a, a similar, actually it's even bigger, style uh, wooden enclosure that would work well for indoors. And you can still set up in pretty much the same way. Uh, the other thing, uh, once you've got it set up, is you're going to need to use hiding spots. This is a nice solid hide. Uh, if you want to create a warmer uh, hot spot, you can go ahead and put that uh, where your hot spot would be. In this size cage, because the back uh, moves less than the front, uh, I actually prefer to put the heat spot in the back just to keep the bulbs lasting longer. Uh, so this uh, more solid um, kind of ceramic hiding spot would work well because it's going to make it a little bit warmer in there and create a nice warm toasty little area. Um, and then while you've got the this kind of spot to be warm, you'll add moss in and around uh, this cave here. Make sure it's nice and wet when you put it in. Obviously I've got it dry because this isn't getting fully set up. Uh, but you can go ahead and dunk this in a bucket of water, make sure it's nice and wet. Put it in, put it underneath the, the hide, so that way as it dries, it creates humidity. Um, one of the big things to consider is that you don't want the cage to be wet all the time. What you want is that you want to add water and have it evaporate within the cage. Evaporating water means humidity. So if your cage is drying out every day, perfect. That means you're doing it right. You should be adding a lot of water, not a lot, but you should be adding at least some water every day. And if it takes more than a couple days for your cage to start to at least look a little bit drier, uh, you might be adding a little too much water. So there's a few options for hiding spots. This is another one. This is actually the Zoom Eternal Hut. And for a lot of these, I actually like using these uh, more solid, non-wood uh, hiding spots just because for the moisture and humidity, uh, you don't have to worry about the, the wood molding or going bad. I've also got the Zoom Med Remti Ramp Bowl. It's got the nice ramp entrance and a ramp uh, in and out of water, basically. So it's your little baby tortoise here. You can walk in and walk back out easily without having to, without you having to worry about it getting trapped um, while you're not home. Uh, I like to put that up in the front so it's easy to get in and out of the cage. One of the biggest things is you're going to be changing this water every day. Uh, if the water isn't fresh enough for you to want to drink it, why would you want your animals to have to drink that? So it's very, very, very important to make sure that you keep the water clean and pristine for your pets. Uh, then, from there, uh, always, always a thermometer. This one is the Fluker's thermometer and hygrometer, so it does temperature and humidity. Alright, so this uh, thermometer and hygrometer also has a min-max, so that means what you do is you put it over here uh, where your hot spot's going to be, so that way you can see just how hot or just how cold it gets, uh, and I like to do that uh, to kind of keep an eye on what it's doing. And this one is attached by Velcro to the sticky part, so you can actually move it throughout the cage and see, again, just how cold it gets in the cold side, just how hot it gets in the hot side, you can put it in the hot side high um, and see 
just how hot it really gets in there and adjust your temperatures as needed. Um, and speaking of temperatures, uh, I, again, really, really prefer using uh, a mercury vapor bulb. This is the Zoomit Power Sun. Uh, this is the 100 watt bulb, and for this two foot by two foot square enclosure, that's perfect. Uh, for a smaller enclosure, which I don't really recommend, tortoises are extremely active little animals. You're going to want a lot of floor space. But if you have to go smaller, you're going to want a lower wattage bulb, and you're going to want to use a tube fluorescent combined with a lower wattage basking spot. Uh, this power sun, though, is a mercury vapor bulb, which means it does both heat and UVB in one light bulb. It's big, it's bright, it's hot. Uh, and it works extremely well for raising up your babies. Uh, but the big thing to consider, again, is it is big, bright, and hot, which means it's going to dry out your cage, which is good because humidity. Uh, but that just means it's something for you to keep in mind. You do have to pay attention to the water in there uh, because even though these little guys, even though these little guys are a, normally a desert species, as babies, they usually hatch and emerge uh, during the rainy season. So even though a big adult leopard can be kept relatively dry for a tortoise. Uh, a baby like this is going to need much higher humidity within the enclosure uh, in order to thrive. Because again, it's a baby, just like any kind of baby animal. A puppy can't survive in the same conditions as an adult dog can. A baby person can't survive in the same conditions an adult person can. Uh, baby tortoises, they're babies. You got to treat them a little bit special. So, in that note, we also I also recommend using a night time heat. You're going to want their warm side, their warm area, to stay in about the mid to low 80s at night. <laughs> they don't need to be quite as hot at night as they are during the day, uh, but they can also can't get too terribly cold. You want them to be able to stay uh, between uh, 78 and 85 at night with the cool side of the cage dropping down to room temperature up to 75. And over here again in the warm spot at night, uh, let it be in the mid to low 80s. Uh, so, you've got all of this stuff, and again, uh, the power sun is mimicking the sun. So you're going to want it on when the sun would be up, so that's going to be uh, basically at least 12 hours for winter, maybe 10 to 12 hours in winter, and then four, closer to 14 hours in summer. Uh, you can use a timer to help you out with that, we carry a few of them on our website. Uh, even ZooMed has one that does day and night, so that'll be linked in the about section below this video, so if you want to go ahead and scroll down and check it out, there are a bunch of options. Um, and then, we carry Missouri, Zoomed, and even now Exoterra all makes these grassland tortoise foods. Uh, the Exoterra one is actually a softer pellet, and I've found that uh, while your baby tortoise might not enjoy the dry Zoomed stuff or the dry Missouri right off the bat, this is almost, I don't know what they put in it, if it's like Fruit Loops. It's not actually made out of Fruit Loops, but whatever they put in here, the tortoises love, and it smells really good to them. If you want to check it out, we've got the, the breakdown of nutrition on our website. The same with the Zoo Med pellets, and the same with the Missouri diet. The, uh, the Missouri is actually one of the more popular zoo brands. It's actually used in many zoos as their primary diet, so this is definitely the one of the top of the line uh, diets to get. So it's definitely worth a shot. And then, on top of that, Grassland species should be fed a high fiber diet. So you're looking at different hays to incorporate into the diet, lots of dark leafy greens um, and veggies. Uh, you also want to dust any fresh produce with a little bit of, of vitamin and calcium powder just because there is no way in captivity for you to offer the same hundreds of different plants and vegetation that these little babies would be eating in the wild. Um, I actually wrote our care sheet on our website. We have a little article on how to raise grassland species of tortoises and in there I cover uh, different dietary options. One of the things that I did while writing that article was I researched uh, in a few different books and a few different articles uh, people who did studies on growth and growth rates, shell, uh, shell quality of tortoises raised in different diets. And interestingly, one of the biggest things that, uh, that people do is to feed their tortoises lots of wet food. Start your baby off, it's okay to actually have the food built a little bit. Let it get kind of dried out. Again, these are baby grassland species. They don't get a whole bunch of lettuce and then fruit and then uh, bits of carrot cheese grated onto their diet. It's okay for it to be a little bit, uh, little bit drier, to be a lot more heavy in the more high fiber leafy greens. Uh, if you can get a source of grass, for example, if you can raise some grass to cut up and put in their food, lots of lettuces. Uh, you do want to stay away from iceberg. It is pretty much just fiber and water, which uh, is pretty much useless uh, for this kind of uh, captive tortoise. Uh, 
But you can do things like kale, you can do things like spinach, you can do things like bok choy, you can do uh, red leaf lettuce, green leaf lettuce, cilantro, parsley. Uh, the big thing to remember is variety. If you look online and you see a lot of the forums, for example, it's frowned upon to do a lot of spinach, which is true. Uh, if you ate spinach every meal for half of your meal every day, you probably have some dietary problems too. You'd have a, a bit of a bone disease. Um, but one or two leaves of spinach, along with the, the mix of everything else, that's just fine. You don't have to worry about that. The big thing is moderation. Uh, that combined with a good pelleted diet to help get your baby started on a nice high fiber, drier diet, which will, for a leopard tortoise or sulcata, okay, um, it works very, very well. So that's pretty much it. That's the kind of basic stuff that you're looking at, your cage, your bedding, lighting, supplements, food, water bowl. A tortoise is relatively simple. The biggest thing is just going to be, uh, with babies, definitely higher up in the water requirements. You definitely want them to stay nice and humid. Uh, you want to be able to stick your hand in the cage and feel it be muggy. So one of the things that you might do for a screen top enclosure like this is actually put a towel over it. Uh, you can use, I know some people use uh, aluminum foil, they use saran wrap. You don't want to block the whole thing off, but if you block off half of it, that will help to keep the warm, moist air in the enclosure. As your babies get bigger, you can let them dry out a little bit more. And once they're about this size, it's pretty much, uh, they're pretty sturdy at that point, so you're not going to have to worry near, nearly so much about humidity. Um, so there you have it. Everything you just saw me uh, talk about here is going to be available on our website, except of course this big glass tank because we can't ship these without them breaking. Uh, but you should be able to find something similar to this locally to you. Again, everything you see here, uh, except for the tank, uh, you can order on our website, which is going to be www.llreptile.com. Uh, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.